This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Welcome to Tan Talk 1340. We're, I'm Jim Arnold, and this is Random Talk with my cohort, Paul Cox. That's right. And what do you do, Paul? I'm a chiropractor from Newport Ritchie. Okay, and I'm a collectaholic. I have uh, realart.net. That's R E E L N A T. I collect movie props and memorabilia. And I have a whole line of ancient mystery items. So, <coughs> Paul just uh, hacked up uh, some of my yeah. movie items. That's not a very <laughs> nice man. Uh, you would think I, this would be a big weekend for me with the Academy Awards and everything, but uh, you know, I, I uh, yeah, how I, was I, business? Oh, I I sold a lot of stuff. It's all my people aren't watching the Academy Awards. They're on my website buying stuff. The uh, I haven't seen one of the movies that uh, won an award is uh, Twelve Shades of Grey or whatever it is. Uh, oh, Twelve, 12 Slaves years, of Grey. Twelve Years a Slave. Twelve Years a Slave. Okay. Uh, I think you know the highlight of the evening was uh, uh, a pizza was delivered for uh, on stage to the people. I guess the front row people. Uh, get to eat the pizza you know like yeah. uh, dustin hoffman and who's ever sitting in the front row uh no it was your man my man yeah indiana jones oh harrison ford he got a big piece of the mushroom and i, I was watching him yeah he, he went right for it he didn't hesitate well who uh the guy the pizza guy got a thousand dollar uh tip he owns the store no, he doesn't. The he was on Ellen the next day, and Ellen had him on the next day, and he was telling the story. They got a call in, and he thought it was just like any other call, and it, he pulled up to that Dolby Theater where the awards was, and he yeah. thought somebody in the back was just, uh, uh, and I guess he brought like seven pizzas or something, and uh, he thought they were just for the crew in the back, the and writers, they, the right. writers, yeah. And uh, uh, he had no idea, and he's just a regular driver that works there. So well, now heard, the guy's got to, he's writing a book, and <laughs> he's got to really capitalize on I it. I heard, and I only heard part of the story, but that he was the owner of the store. Okay, well, it didn't say that he was or was not the owner. It just said that he was just like a regular driver, and they just called this out of the blue uh uh and it didn't really say the other the other uh thing that happened i guess some uh a videographer had died and there was a little controversy that they didn't put her picture in the slideshow and some people got upset well some harold of, ramus wasn't in there i don't know i didn't because i didn't you know, watch groundhog it. day and well, he should have been in there, but the uh, he wasn't in it. This this woman though, uh, maybe they didn't have enough time to put it. Sid, was Sid Caesar in there? Because he just died this week too. Or I don't know. I didn't see that part of the uh, show. But anyway, they may not have had enough time to put his picture in there. But this woman died with plenty of time. I didn't and, see the show because uh, I was too busy running fake calls on your website. <laughs> <laughs> It keeps you busy. <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, but this, this guy, anyway, Bette Midler, like, had to make a stand and say about this videographer that, uh, you know, he should be there, you know. Anyway, you know, the big excitement of the, the Academy Awards is, uh, you know, the Clintons were out there. Bill Clinton, not that the Clintons, Bill Clinton was out oh, there. Oh, oh. And you know he got himself into trouble again. Was he this with guy, Hillary? This guy's like was me. he with Hillary? Well, everybody thought it was Hillary uh, at the beginning, but he got his he uh, he he got his picture taken with uh, two girls: a blonde-haired girl on the right and a brunette on the left. How'd they look? And uh, they looked pretty good to me in the picture, and. He paused to pose with these women, and he had a dis 
a little grin on his face going on in the picture. And it's usually not a big deal. But in this case, it was because these women were prostitutes for the infamous Moonlight Bunny Ranch brothel in Carson City, Nevada. <laughs> and now the photo is posted on the Bunny Ranch <laughs> Facebook page with the ca- caption, Yes, that just happened. Wow. And uh, they're identified as Barbie Girl and Ava Adora. And they attended the United Humanity event with Bunny Ranch owner Dennis Hoff and porn star Ron Jeremy. Uh oh, Cedric putting a picture of them on. They He's look showing good. Us. They look good. They're hot. I oh, know they're hot, man. I love that blonde. I mean, you know how I, I, she's really. Uh, that Go must on, be that up. must back, be back that must be there. Ron Jeremy's uh, girl right there. And they went to the event, and uh, sources say that the prostitutes were removed from the party after the photo with Clinton was taken. And then he ended up going on stage and talking. And he was seen after he talked with Forrest Whitaker, and they had a couple of, they were laughing in the background. (laughs) Good old Bill Clinton, man. The guy still keeps up... uh, you know, as well. Yeah, you know, uh, he he's uh, you know, you got to give the guy credit. Even his post presidential uh, work, man, his his wife's got an agenda, and he's just having fun with life. You know, he goes to these events, he gets five hundred grand to talk, and he gets to put, get pictures taken with prostitutes. <laughs> who come to the event. It probably costs them, you know, 500 bucks a ticket or something like that to go to this stupid thing. And, uh, but uh, I never, uh, did you ever have an inclination to go to the Academy Award? No, as you know, I was just in L.A. for a week. And, right. And uh, I went to, to everywhere. I, I love L.A. I mean, I just don't know how anybody can afford to live out there. It's a, It's like... Florida, it's a great place to visit, but you know, uh, you make pretty good money out there, but it's thirteen percent taxes. Right, right. So and, I don't know how it, you can afford to live out there, but it's there's so much action and things like that. I uh, I went to a, a couple good parties while I was there, and they were free, and they were loaded up with whatever you wanted, you know, and. Uh, well, the the place is really so. Of course, the weather you can't beat the weather. I mean, there's an article in a paper, a Philadelphia reporter. He was out reporting about the weather in Philadelphia with all the snow, and hell, a snowplow ran by and covered him with a sheet of snow and knocked him over. <laughs> was he all right? He's, yeah, after he uh, uh, he dug himself out of the snow, he was okay, and uh, the uh, but he got himself up and uh, warmed himself all together. Hey, remember that uh, you you said you were talking last week about the couple that found uh, all those coins? Oh yeah, yeah. I dug up a thing, and there was an article in the paper that that couple they found ten million dollars in gold coins, and they're going to have to hand over. Uh, and they're going to establish uh, half of that in taxes. So $5 million, whether they sell the coins or not. The coins are valued at $10 million, and that value is based on uh, today's value of that particular coin. Uh, and whether they sell the coin or not, they're going to have to hand over uh, like a 49% tax rate. Well, I, you know, the government needs it. They're going to give, uh, I see where they just gave the Ukraine an emergency aid for $1 billion. I saw that. I saw that. Why, I, mean, I mean, they keep throwing our money around. What do we care about the Ukraine? Well, I, I, I do like care s- about the Ukraine. I have some friends from the Ukraine. and uh, Who, Who's from the Ukraine? I met these two girls from the Ukraine. Oh, they live. Uh, one lives in New York and one lives in D.C. And 
They're really nice people. Are they Slavic? No. Well, that's what the Ukraine is, isn't it? It's well, a Slavic I don't know, state. but these girls you know are what tall Slavs and mean. thin. They're tall and thin. Real and, thin. Really? Yeah. Now, did they get their picture taken with Bill Clinton? No, they, they got their that. picture they, taken with Paul are, Cox, right? They, yes, they did. But these are really nice girls. So. Oh, okay. So, so are you going to have them at your Christmas party this year? I had them to my house last Christmas. They spent a week with me. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you'll invite me for your Christmas party this year. I don't have a Christmas party anymore. Oh. I used to. I had I always had a Christmas Eve party. Did you? And there was always like 50, 60 people. And... I never told anybody. They just would show up. So, but now. Now this time you're not going to have the Christmas party. No, Uh-oh. I'm living in a condo now. I'm, I rented out my house. Yeah. And, you know, they while they were out in California. <coughs> yeah. Now I'm hacking up the. What you bring in here today? I think that uh, dog was in here. I got uh, mites going no. around. Uh and while they were out in California, they found some very exciting historical find under Alcatraz. Mm. You know what they found? Dead bodies. Well, you know, that guy that uh, they escaped from Alcatraz, and that was an Oscar-winning film, by the way. Well, they found out that the... You, did you know that this was... Alcatraz was a Civil War base before Alcatraz? Yes. I never knew that. They they found some tunnels underneath Alcatraz with Civil War cannons and all that kind of stuff. Didn't you ever watch The Rock? No. The movie The Rock? No. You know, Sean I don't Connery know. and what's his name? With uh, uh, Harry Hamlin or? No, not Harry Hamlin. Well, there was one. There was a Presidio was one, and they went out there. Well, the to, Presidio isn't Alcatraz. Presidio was the base that's on the mainland straight across from Alcatraz. Right. And then the Golden Gate Bridge sets off the side. And if you ever go to San Francisco, they do tours of all of these areas. And that's how I found out about this is I took a, a gray line tour, which was like a hundred bucks, but it was, you got everything in. And they took you out to Alcatraz? Alcatraz. I thought that was a bus tour. It is. And it drove out to Alcatraz. They put these pontoons on the bottom of the bus, and they just floated it right on out there. <laughs> we took, you know, we took a ferry out. I asked for that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You're really confrontational today. I know it. You know, they, uh, what's his face got me? I know all, you're not. Uh, I know you don't mean to be, but that what's his face got me all worked up talking about religion before we came in there. Oh, we got a call. Uh, Marsha, you're on the air. I uh, just wanted to say that uh, the Rock movie was with um, Ed Harris, Nicolas Cage, Sean Connery. Can't believe Jim, you don't know this. I know. Uh, don't crucify me, baby. Score one for Paul. Score one for Paul. Um, thank, thank you, Marsha. Happy Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna do, uh, well, happy Pat Tuesday to you. Thank you. I'm feeling Mardi Gras ish. So you're going to meet, meet me down in uh, Dunedin for uh, the parade tonight? I don't know. I just may. Okay. I don't know either, Marsha. I might go down there. I'm not sure. Depends on how confrontational Jimmy gets today. I know. That's the way I'm feeling. Yeah, I already got, uh, We I had a, what, half hour discussion about religion before we came into the booth here? Yeah, he's warmed up. I'm warmed up. Uh, Oh, geez. He's waiting for that guy carrying the cross. I am, you know, and I'm going to tell him. What makes you think I haven't already been saved? Uh, <laughs> now, for all you folks I'm here. I'm trying to save him. I'm trying to save him. Not <laughs> a very well, good job at that, but, you know. Well, I mean, really, these guys walk in these parades, and they carry a cross or they carry a banner, and it says you need to be saved. Now, I'm, I'm as I sit here in the booth. I have a costume on. Uh, I'm a member of the a men's group, Gauchos, last of a breed, and we're marching parades. And we're going to march in the Dunedin parade tonight, which is a Fat Tuesday parade. And 
what har- we're marching in a parade we have a float it plays music we throw beads to kids and old ladies and this guy these guys walk on the street you need to be saved what the hell are we doing wrong i don't think you're doing anything wrong well I'm that's just... why i keep telling them uh, i've already been saved you know why do i need to be maybe you need to be saved and that's what i was telling lee in here earlier he needs to be saved he was not oh, listening okay. all right Jimmy. <laughs> Well, my question there is, is he being paid to do that? Because you were talking earlier about um, all the money we're giving to all these foreign countries, and uh, I know we're in a recession, so, and we're, you know, trillions of dollars in debt, so again, I don't understand, is this just a democratic way, or is this the way America wants Well, I, we talked about this a little bit, you know, right before we came on the air, the government, Obama, Ob- the Obama-rama, they, what'd they say, uh, $1 billion they set up in aid for uh, the Ukraine? Yeah. Uh, Paul's buddies are going to try to get some loans out of there and direct them our way, but, uh, and they all live in the USA anyway. And the uh, uh, got Bill Clinton doing his shenanigans, so he would fit right in with the uh, St. Patrick's Day parade. Well, he said he'd fly over uh, in a in Paris. He'd meet in Paris for he didn't want to get close to the action, and he'd meet with some of the wives over there and give a talk. Well, of course he will. <laughs> he, he is good with women. He is good with women. You know, you remember our neighbor, uh, she said she voted for Bill Clinton, and we said why, and she said he, she thought he was good looking. Yeah, he didn't know what the agenda was, but he was good looking. He looks like yeah. somebody she'd like to date. Yeah. <laughs> so she thought she'd cast her vote. Well, at least that was a reason, you know. Yeah, she said she couldn't figure out, though, when she voted. how She wanted to vote for Bill Clinton, but she didn't want to vote for Al Gore because she didn't like him. So she couldn't figure out when she casted her vote, how can I cut Al Gore off the thing? So she only uh, she only did half the Chad when she punched it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe well, that's just her. I know who you're talking about. Uh, uh, this is, I'm coming up on the second accident on US-19. Oh, you're in your car? Yes, three cars. Um, this is right by uh, um, Curlew. Uh-oh. And there was one earlier. Where are you headed? The car flipped over. I'm going to Bel Air. Oh, okay. And then are, are you coming back? That's a long break? ways to go to shop, you know. I mean, we've got a Publix right up by where we live. Yeah, I'm not going grocery shopping. I'm just going shopping, shopping. So what? You 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 going to Bel Air to shop? I love the this woman. Li- this woman lives up in Tallahassee, and she's going to Bel Air to shop. I I don't get it. <laughs> well, they have the best stores for me. I don't okay. Know. Oh, okay. Well, we know in Newport Ritchie, they sure don't have them, right? Well, they they need to. It's well, that's the city. The only thing is, in Newport Ritchie, when you go to the store to get something, they give you a beer to go along with it. So, <laughs> well, uh, I'll leave my debit card at home, and I don't have the ETB card. Uh, I don't qualify, so it's all good. Anyhow, you boys have a fun day, and and again, happy Fat Tuesday to you. Well, happy Fat T- Tuesday to you, and thanks for calling in. Anybody yeah. else that wants to call yeah. in, it's 727-441-3000. Paul, do you want to say goodbye? Goodbye, Marsha. Goodbye, Paul. <laughs> See, she was waiting for you. I know. I love Marsha. Call us back at 727-441-3000 and get in on it. Now, me and Paul went to a grand event last weekend. It's called the Wild Game Dinner. We, it was Wild Game Dinner. It too. was wild, man. We walked in. We, first of all, you got to drive back into the woods. And in the woods, I kept thinking I saw deer back there. No, nope, just men peeing. And uh, <laughs> once we get inside, the big rush was to get to the bar. And, man, these guys were pouring some stiff drinks, right? I mean, I, yes, I, they were. I told the guy, give me a gin and tonic, and he filled it up with Tangare. And I didn't get any tonic at all. I mean, these. Uh, are you complaining? No, but I mean, uh, 
these guys were uh, really something. That's and, a fun. It's it's all donated. The all the money that they collect, which is thousands and thousands. Well, how much of money do you think they they made there? Well, I'll bet you there were the tickets were 150 bucks a piece. And there were probably two thousand people there. So and then they auctioned off a bunch of stuff that was like, like go shoot a deer I up. I bet you they. Texas. I bet you they make about seventy five thousand. Yeah, they make three hundred grand. Do they? Yes, it's a, it's in the top ten of the Rotary Club fundraisers in the United States. Holy smokes! That's why they think they're so great. They are. They, you know, those guys. They at least give some free time, their spare time, and they don't have spare time. I know a lot of these guys, and yeah, like, they work. They work fifty, sixty hours a week. Yeah, like some of our friends that belong to that. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be a member of that club for 15 years. The uh, that was before they had to work the event like that. They didn't make me work the event. The uh, but we go in and you know they got your claw, what the stone crab claws and uh, gator Clams. ribs and uh, the guy hands me a duck. I said it looked like a chicken leg, and uh, or not a chicken leg. It looked like a chicken wing. And he said, I said, what's this? It's, he says, it's a duck duck wing. So I grabbed the thing, and I bit into it, and it was, like, black. And I'm like, oh, my God. And it was all greasy. I spit it out and threw the, threw the thing out. Generally, the food was really pretty good. I thought the food, food was pretty good. There was some venison and uh, gator. And uh, they they ran out of elk before I got up there. And uh, frogs legs, frog legs were really good this quail. year. The quail was really good. That's I really like. I the thought quail. the barbecue, that chopped barbecue. I didn't was get the, the pork because I always eat pulled pork from you know uh, a couple of the places up our way. And turkey, I didn't eat any of that because I always eat. You know, you can always get turkey. But how some, about those pigs they brought out on, on the spits? Yeah, and they the pig, them out. man. They they bring two pigs out and they're cooked, and the people go through those like a razor blade. It sounded like a beehive. They they put those things out, and you got these guys diving into a pig, and they're <laughs> and they're just taking by the hand, grabbing handfuls of meat off this pig until there's nothing left of the pig. It, it's just laying flat on this uh, table that they wheel out. And uh, how about that? It's all good. I grabbed a jaw, a lower jaw of that, and, and had my picture taken for the Rotary uh, Club uh, booklet this week. And I know my neighbor brought that home. Oh, he did? <laughs> he brought it home and passed out, and he woke up and he heard a bunch of crunching, and his uh, cocker spaniel <laughs> had that thing in the family room. Oh, and they, no. He had that all torn apart in the family room, that oh, lower boy. jaw to that pig and uh ate the whole thing he told you know what he told me because i went back you know back long ago when i used to go to this thing i used to spend a couple hundred bucks just on food to take home with me yeah but now there's so many people there by the time i get up there it's all gone and uh he said he there was a couple bags of food on the table and he went by it a couple times and then he took it he picked it up and took it home with them yeah they're giving away food Really? Yeah, because they don't want anything to go to waste. No, but they were selling it. They sell it. So somebody paid for that. Oh. And he well, just took he it off for free. By accident. And, maybe he and I said, it. well, give me some of it. And he said, I ate it all. Yeah. And, uh, but the, uh, and then I, you know, they got the cigar guy rolling cigars there. And then I got, what did I get? Three boxes of cigars. And, uh, it's a good time. A good time. And of course, they, they finally got my, uh, apology and straightened out oh yeah it's like the apology of constantine for christ's sake uh with the church and i walk into the place uh and i got people hugging me. well you got what you wanted and and i haven't had I'm people glad you're back i'm yeah, glad you're back i, I haven't had people hugging me that didn't like me they're going yeah, glad you're back now we can have that confrontation again you know uh but uh Hey, did you did you hear about the uh, the up in the, in the news here uh, around here? The uh, this guy is walking into the uh, uh, Waffle House, and he's claiming to be a franchise manager. 
that he's inspecting these Waffle Houses. And uh, I thought it was a woman. Is it? Uh, is it a woman? Yeah, it is a woman. So she walks in and she says, "Hey, I'm the franchise manager. I'm here to inspect Waffle House for the national company." And they let her come in, and she takes a hundred bucks out of the cash register. And she did this to three or four stores before they finally caught her. And then she had to, and then they, she had to give that money back. I mean, who would do that for a hundred bucks? I mean, taking a chance of getting arrested for a hundred bucks—it's ridiculous. That is a strange story. And then, of course. Uh, you know, uh, the other thing, there's some things on the market this week. Gulpo, the car eating decal. You know, everybody's got one of those Jesus fishes on the back of their car or yeah. Darwin fishes. Well, this yeah. Gulpo thing goes over that and it eats it. So it's a, like a big whale. What do you mean it eats it? Well, it goes over that. So when you got a Jesus fish on the back of your car or you got a Goddard uh, fish or you got a Darwin fish, this thing is a whale and you put it on the back of your car or your friend's car and it like eats the eats the fish so that you know you're sick of the damn jesus fish and you're going to put this on there to eat it that you can get that for 10.99 so and it takes it off right that's right and then you know they've just because the new movie's coming out for star wars they got some designer star wars jewelry now uh, this stuff is expensive it goes up to five thousand dollars and you can get han solo and carbonite rings and necklaces and all kinds of stuff when and are you gonna have it i don't know uh i may get something i got so much jewelry now though i hate to go and spend more money on on that stuff uh you know because the uh it's just ridiculous you know i got so much jewelry you probably do too you know, you get to a certain age where you've spent so No, much. I do not have any jewelry. I have watches. That's it. You don't have any, uh, like, uh, big jewelry? No. No. Now, the, uh, now, did you hear what's in the news? You know, I was talking with that guy about religion. So uh, there was an article about religion in the news. The, uh, uh, the Pope. Oh, jeez. The new Pope. You know, he left an F-bomb. He did a... let. He dropped an F-bomb. He was talking about the Ukraine, and he dropped an F-bomb. Uh, I guess it's in Italian what an F-bomb equivalent in Italian is. He meant to say something, and he said something else, and it it's the equivalent of an F-bomb. And then he kind of laughed and apologized, and he said, you know, it happens to everybody. You know, I like this guy, you know. Come on, at least he's not trying to, to hide it or anything. And he went on, life's going to go on. And well, you know when he left when he left that f bomb at the moment they they clocked the time he did that, and in uh Lexington Mississippi at that exact time, Walter Williams and now he was declared dead he wake woke up in a body bag at the funeral home. Now do you believe this stuff? Yeah, we can't make well, this stuff up. We don't make this stuff. I up. think I'd be looking at the person who s declared me dead yeah he's seventy eight years old. And they declared him dead. The coroner came to the house, pronounced him dead at 9 p.m. And they, they put him in a body bag, took him to the funeral home, and they were getting ready to embalm him. And right when the Pope did that, uh, all of a sudden he started jerking in his body bag, and they opened it up. Now, realistically, they attested this to uh, his pacemaker had stopped. So the pacemaker had stopped and restarted. So when evidently they didn't know he had a pacemaker, and when they felt his heart, his heart wasn't going. But what, wouldn't his heart, you know, you're a doctor, uh, his heart being off for that long of a period, uh, wouldn't it do da brain damage or something? Well, first of all, we don't know how long it was off. So, yes, it, and some well, people. From, a, from the house to the coroner's place. You don't know how long it was off. It could have just been a glitch while the guy was checking it. You know, that's what I'm thinking. It was just a little glitch. The guy checked it. It wasn't beating. He says he's dead, and then they wrap him up, and it goes right back to beating again, you know? But what happens with the brain is when you die, that's the very last thing that happens in your body because the brain shuts every other organ down.
right. and saves all energy for itself. So it can kickstart everything back up. So, well, he's, you know, he's, he's back with us. He's 78 years old. And now he said he's going to he, he, try to f- find his new religion. He said he's going to party now. He's going to party. He's, he's out on Fat Tuesday tonight. He's going to be in the parade tonight. He's our parade sponsor. Uh, he's going to be with his staff at the beginning of the parade marching yeah, down the right. street. Uh, also in the news, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, it's starting to be uh, terrorized by packs of stray chihuahuas. Now, have you heard about this? The stray chihuahuas, and there's like 30 or 40 of them now, running around. A, uh, they're living in a uh, abandoned mobile home and breeding and uh, i guess this started out with just a few in there and now they're breeding in this abandoned mobile home and they've called animal control out animal control doesn't seem to be able to i mean they sprayed or whatever they can and they've had over six thousand calls because these dogs are just going wild around the neighborhood and they're running in packs so they stay in packs. It's almost like a pack of wild wolves or something. And uh, they just can't seem to get this under control. Talking about that, when do you really foresee that we're going to see aliens from another world on this, on this earth? When do I see it? Yeah. Do you think in our lifetime it's going to happen? It's a uh, it's a difficult question because you know what uh, in my opinion it's uh, similar to the religion question. It's not a that's it's it's not a fact that we can really say is factual because there's not enough evidence to prove one way or another. And the there is enough you know as we get more intelligent and we get more we find more things archaeological things and we find more of these ancient booklets that tell us more uh it leads us to believe you know the the main theory right now that uh scholars believe is that uh, a planet out there and there is a planet that we can't see but it, they know it's there by the way it affects the stars, and it's in the Sirius uh, constellation. And that planet, which they call Planet X, uh, according to the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is the first book that was written on Earth, and they came down here, they used gold as power. They came down here to mine this. They made clones in their own image, which would be what the Bible says. God made us in his own image. And they started cl- uh, mining this stuff. And uh, when they came back to check on them, they found out that the people in charge were having sex with the uh, slaves. And so the the head, which would be the God, decided to kill everybody. And he left Uptushin who's the Noah figure, to stay on the planet. And they created a flood to kill everybody on the planet. So it, it, it falls in line with our religion. And, if, and that Adam and Eve story is in that story. That would be cloning right. for the uh, us. So if you believe that, then that race at some point is going to come back here. And that's what the religion says is Christ will come back here just, you know, one day. Uh, in the future and uh, so if you believe that they'll come back here someday and we'll have contact with them and their technology is so much further advanced than us you know where we're like uh, in the ancient times so just imagine how much further advanced they will be than we are right now and we think we are on the crust of technology here so that's one part of the story okay then the other part is that figure that you got from Roswell out there. Yeah. But they've pretty well, uh, with government documents that have been released, uh, that that Roswell was a, uh, um, you know, a government uh, thing. Now, I have the alien autopsy. So if you go on my website at R E E L, 
ART.net. You can see the alien autopsy that appeared in uh, 1949, and they have these. They got an, an alien on the table, and they actually do an autopsy. It's about a three minute autopsy, and they cut them open and everything. That is what the standard alien that we see, you know, with the the eyes and everything, is based on. Um, and they think that's a that 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 film was a fake. Uh, but you can see it on my uh, website if you go on there. Well, the uh, reason, Jimmy, I brought all You can also up. see the Zapruder film where they blow Kennedy's head out, the full Zapruder film. I don't film. want to see that. Uh, it's pretty gross. But, uh, the reason I brought up this thing about aliens and stuff is because oh, okay. they got just found house. 700 new planets. Oh, I Alien saw that. World. I saw that. I saw that. And well, there's a, there's uh, an infinite infinite amount of uh, probably you know if the if the space is infinite, so there's probably infinite amount of galaxies and planets. We don't know; it's beyond our thinking. So how can you know? And they already they already have uh, scientists already have these planets named as Z one A or something like that, and uh, that they found in like the Andromeda. And even though they only have like uh, eight planets in our uh, solar system, they really don't know how far our solar system goes because they can't see beyond it, you know, to the ends of it. They see through our solar system to these other uh, solar systems, but they can't really see to the end of our solar system. Now, wait a minute. You just said something. Okay. What did I say? Eight planets. Eight planets. In our solar system. I thought there were nine planets in our solar system. Well, Pluto's not a planet. So uh, it was ruled not a planet. Why? And so it's not, well, they have. Oh, it's a they, moon. They, it's they, a moon of what? You know, it's a, it's a technical thing, uh, this astronomical board that makes these rules. It's like water and what you got in your no, water. No, they can't change that. They, they changed it. They and when they change changed it. it, it doesn't now classify as fair. a planet. So, so everything we learned in elementary school and all that's that. That's right. Columbus didn't discover Pluto. You know, I think <laughs> when I was supposed to put down Fast the planets the gamma of the did. Earth, I only put eight. So I really probably got an A on that test. That's right. So go back to your teacher and, and tell her, you know, I'm pissed off because I really I really got all eight. And, and you didn't do it to me. Yeah. How many times were those answers uh, really correct? You never know. You know, I used to debate my teachers about this. Uh, you know, this is completely wrong, and she'd say, it's not. You need to know this. And I said, why? I said, you think this priest can give me confession? You know, I, I have to make up something in there. She says, you have to confess your sins, otherwise you will go to hell. And I said, well, I said, I don't believe that at all. So, I mean, it's ridiculous. Anyway, this homeless, did you see this homeless guy? He, he uses his last few coins to buy a lottery ticket. He won $2.79 million jackpot. And yeah. the unfortunate thing is, guess where this guy lives? I know, but go ahead and tell us. The Ukraine. No, he lives in, <laughs> he lives in Hungary. He lives in Hungary. He's hungry. He's yeah. hungry to go to the Ukraine. That, that's a great story i'm happy for him yeah and but you know what sound too smart i'd be saving those last few pennies and I the had. uh you know they're saying all the soothsayers out there are saying obama created this whole mess in the ukraine uh to avoid attention from some of his other stuff do you know that i haven't heard that oh yeah yeah he wanted to divert attention from some of his green projects he uh the, you know his first uh solar uh electric generating system opened last thursday in uh california and you know when they turned it on now it does have the power to serve 140,000 homes but when they turned it on it started burning birds that fly over it so every time birds fly over it it like hits them like a laser and then they land on the solar thing so the environmentalists are are raising hell, but he wants to keep the uh, news away from these environmentalists because uh, he doesn't want to make them pissed off at him. Uh, 
Now, another thing on the market here, you know, what's some woman came up with this idea, and, and she's from California, and she's trying to sell them outside the Academy Awards. Uh, I don't know how many. I haven't heard how many she sold, but she got a creepy a kissing pillow. And this pillow's like nineteen ninety nine, and she got the idea because she when she was a kid, she wanted something to practice kissing on before she uh, came up to with a uh, uh, you know her boyfriend to yeah, make how, sure. Uh, how much are they? Nineteen ninety nine. And they're made out of, they got like a latex face on it. It looks like Groucho Marx. It's all for and, teenagers um, to practice She can kissing. tongue, she can French kiss, so there's a hole there so she can stick Not her tongue in there. Not everybody does that, Jim. And, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Actually, there's a woman in Florida that has something like that, too. Yeah, up in Newport Ritchie, there's a lot of them, right? <laughs> well, I think she's from uh, West Palm Beach area. I used to have a bead that did that, but yes, uh, they made did. me take it off uh and uh also outside the cami awards they were selling his and hers star wars uh leah and han solo towels for your bathroom and you can buy these for 12.99 you oh, see this geez. guy that uh tat there was a guy outside there you know some on the strip down there in hollywood it's got pretty nasty now you were just out there in la yeah, did you see this some of the tattoo shops there I saw a lot of tattoo shops. One of the famous of guys people. there, he tat the, one of the guys that does the tattoos, he's tattooed a world map on his back. And then when he comes back, he colors in every country he's uh, visited. And so far, he's uh, got 20 countries. So that, that would be... Very colorful. Very colorful, very sore... I don't know. Sounds like an idiotic thing to do. Do you got any tattoos? No, I don't. I don't either. Uh, I got some friends that got some, but... Uh, yeah, that's, they're all right. You know, Marshall do what doesn't you want to do. Any. Marshall doesn't have any either. Uh, also in the news today, you're a big exercise nut, aren't you? No. No? You, no. Paul works off seven times a week. No, I haven't worked out like four days a week. This uh, man gets a ticket for running in Central Park too early. Now, would you think you'd get a ticket for running in Central Park too early? Had a five hundred dollar ticket. That's or a no, a thousand dollar fine. He was ticketed. Was it a thousand? I thought it was like no, it was a thousand dollars for uh, uh, this Peter Shankman. He's getting ready for a triathlon. Yeah. And he got up at 4.30, and this is in the cold. And he went into the park and started jogging, and a cop pulls him over and told him, hey, uh, you need to stop running. And the guys, he's like, what, are you kidding me? And he said, the park is closed from 1 to 6 a.m. He was still running. And he was was there. Oh, was he? Yeah. And uh, so he kept running, and... He says, hey, buddy, the park doesn't open to 6. You need to run on the sidewalk outside the park. And if you don't, I'm going to put you in cuffs and take you into the station. So he ended up giving him a hard, uh, uh, he ended up giving him a ticket for 1000 bucks. So, I mean, is that ridiculous or what? Ridiculous or what? I wonder why they have it closed like that. Well, because there's probably too much crime going on in there. Well, it could be. Of course, that's a good part of New York. And then who wants to patrol it in the middle of the night anyway? Isn't that the good part of New York where you can eat off the ground? No, but it depends on what part of Central Park you're in. If you're right there by the plaza, you know, that's really nice. And, yeah, everything's fine there. But you get deep in there, you can get lost. Well, also in the news and right across from that park, uh, there's a man and he's decided he's going to sue McDonald's. And can you believe why? Why? This guy, he's filed a $1.5 million lawsuit. Remember that woman that uh, she had the hot coffee and it burned her leg or something, Mm -hmm. gave her a rash? Uh, This uh, guy, he's filed a $1.5 million lawsuit saying he suffered undue mental anguish after he was 
only given one napkin with his meal. So he ordered a Big Mac, 12 pesos, special sauce, less cheese, pickles, onion, on sesame seed bun, and fries. And then he got one napkin, and he said he wanted more, and they wouldn't give him another napkin. Actually ordered a quarter pounder deluxe. Now, what do they call quarter pounder in France? Um, oh, it's a Royale. <laughs> and that's a movie uh, quiz question. Where's Marsha when you need her? Uh, isn't, it a, isn't it a Royale? A Royale around? with cheese, yeah. Uh, and according to Lu- Lucas, the manager. Pulp Fiction, by yeah, the way. Yeah, Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, those guys were cool. They walked in there, and that guy smoking the weed. It, hey, dude. We're going to take you in. You got to pay the money. <coughs> and then we'll get the cleaner out here. Clean this thing up. And anyway, uh, un- because of the- he said something to this guy that called him some- something, next thing you know, an attorney's on it for $1.5 million. And uh, what are you doing? The, uh, Paul just got up here and started exercising. He scared the crap out of me. And, uh, you know, you're from up north. Have you ever heard of the Ringing Rocks of Pennsylvania? It's a no, famous no. geological oddity. And uh, the uh, you strike these rocks and you expect to hear a dull thud because you're a, uh, or a chink. And, no, you're hearing a ringing sound. So... The town's capitalized on this, and they get it's been happening since the 1700s. So the town's capitalized on this, and now it's like a, a famous spot to go visit. And they make thousands, of, hundreds, and thousands of dollars a year on this. They got hotels around there, they got restaurants around there, and you can even buy pieces of the rock when you go up there. And they'll they'll put it into a xylophone, and you can play "Mary Had a Little Lamb" on it when you go there. And do you see the latest craze, Paul? I can see you're you're taking part in this because yeah. you look like the the most intelligent man in the world, or whatever. What's that guy's name? Stay thirsty, my friend. The most uh, famous guy in the world. He looks like Geraldo Rivera. Oh Stay yeah. Stay thirsty, my friends. Oh yeah, the Dosakis guy. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. Okay, well now because of that, it started this uh, fit fan fad thing going on. And you can get hair transplants on your face for about seven, eight thousand bucks, just like your hair. Have you ever had a hair transplant? No. I actually was going to have one. I had a scalp lift. Yeah. If you look at my bald spot, you know, I got a yarmulke. I wear a yarmulke to work every day, and it's bald. It's with skin yarmulke. Mm-hmm. It's po- it's uh, very popular with the serial killers, right? And they, uh, 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 I, I, but when they cut my, I did the scalp lift, it's, I stopped having seizures. Is that and, right? Yeah. And, you know, I'm a epileptic. I have seizures about every six months. And so I said, well, whoa, I'm going to wait to do the rest of it and have the hair transplant until I see how these seizures. And for three years, I didn't have any seizures. Uh, and then they came back. And then by that time, I was over the thing about having hair and uh but now you know with this putting it on my chin here i may want a something you know a king tut thing going on yeah uh what do you think and then i can say go stay thirsty my friends stay thirsty my friends here's another tattoo story in the news the guy uh tattoos a spider on his face to combat acrophobia yeah that's fear of spiders there's some stupid uh, people in the world that's for sure you know some stupid people crazy people yeah here's uh here's another item in the that you can buy a brazilian back uh which uh scratch or, or remover it eliminates the need for razors whacking waxing or assistance from another person uh it's called a brazilian back and what it is, you put it on your back, and it strips hair off your back. Oh, my gosh. Now, I don't, uh, I guess everybody does. So this must be like women with waxing and that kind of thing. It's $15.99, and it's available on Amazon. 
and you know maybe when you do this they suggest you wear this it's a dis unisex dis disguise adult mask so you put the mask on and it's just a blank face <laughs> now i don't invent this stuff folks and uh maybe you need to get a after you take the face off you need to get a super shaver soap saver and this thing you put a bar of soap in it and then when you pump the bar it like shaves a piece of soap off the bottom <laughs> really really so like you put a bar of soap in there and it it clamps down on it and then the thing on the bottom you push it in with your hand underneath it, and it like shaves a real small, oh, okay, okay. like ra you know, like a razor blade uh, piece off. Uh, oh, hey, you hear in the news, yeah? Because I do uh, ancient mystery stuff. Uh, in Texas, uh, there was a family, and they claimed they shot a chucabra. And you know, the chucabra is one of those uh, blood sucking, goat eating uh, animals that is a mythical creature, kind of like uh, Bigfoot. And nobody's ever been able to, just like Bigfoot, nobody's ever been able to prove that it's uh, in existence or not in existence. Well, they claim they've shot one. So now, right now, it's being examined by uh, uh, some. Uh, scientists and stuff to see you know what exactly it is is this just a form of a dog that's out running around or what but uh i'll tell you i thought i saw that i saw a picture of this and it looked like the one of those guys at the wild game dinner eating a pig out there man they were like uh, going crazy it had those fangs on it like that they were yeah. going <laughs> i thought that was you no, yeah, we walk in. I didn't see Paul for five hours. I couldn't even see him through the stuff, and uh, that was crazy. Wasn't that crazy? It was a good. Time. You got to admit that was crazy. Now, uh, this day in history, we got some stuff that happened. This day in history, March fourth, eighteen sixty one, Lincoln was sworn in for the first presidential term. Do you know that? And this day, March 4th, 1933, FDR was in our, our inaugurated. Now, this must be the date that they inaugurated these guys. Was it in January? Uh, no, it's March 4th. Oh, jeez. I was talking Because here's another one. March 4th in 1829, Andrew Jackson opens an open house, holds open house at the White House. Now, back in these days, they used to let everybody in. They'd come in with their horses and muddy shoes and everything. And it was after the inauguration. So they must have inaugurated people on this day um, till they changed it. Now, Martha Stewart was released from prison in 2005, March 4th, 2005. The, uh, John Candy died. You remember John Candy? Sure hey, do. we're back to the Oscars again. Now, I don't think he ever won an Oscar. But he was a great, uh, funny guy. Funny guy. What was your favorite John Candy movie? Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck. I kind of liked the Great Outdoors. It was, it was funny. They, uh, you know, cause I'm from Chicago. Are you? From, yeah, yeah. I'm from Chicago, man. I remember these guys. Uh, and today was the day, March fourth, nineteen sixty six, that John Lennon sparked his first major controversy. You know what that is? He married Yoko Ono. No, this was the uh, where he erupted into the bigger that the Beatles were bigger than Jesus thing, oh, and yeah. it. Uh, oh yes. It, it, the Britain it didn't do anything, but when it got over to the U.S., it uh, ended the the whole uh, Beatlemania thing. They started burning records and all that. Now, our word of the day is magnum opus. Do you know what that means? No. It's uh, the greatest achievement of an artist or writer. And Moby Dick, an example, Moby Dick is regarded as Herman Melville's magnum opus. Quote of the day. Growth is the only evidence of life. You know... Uh, sound right to the me. true work of art is but a shadow of divine perfection by Michelangelo. Oh, let, let me hear that one once more. The true work of art is a, 
but a shadow of divine perfection. Hey, okay, I like that. Okay, like that. if you want to kill an idea in the world, get a committee working on it. <laughs> So if you got an idea, get a committee working on it, and that's going to about do it. Uh, clarity is the counterbalance of profound thought. Love is like war, easy to begin, but very hard to stop. I guess that's the thing, because with all this Ukraine stuff yeah. and war uh, right there, love is like war, easy to begin, but very hard to stop. So it's just like getting into a relationship. There are always two people in every picture, the photographer and the viewer, putting in that the photographer is also viewing. And uh, Well, I guess that's it for today, Jim. Yeah, we're heading down the, the home stretch. I'm heading to a parade tonight, and uh, are you going to come back or what? Yeah, I'm coming down. I'm going to have some brewskis. Probably been brewskis been with the Polskis. What is that called? Finleys or whatever that is? Down I there? don't know. What is that? called i probably won't be able to call me when you get down that irish place yeah or whatever yeah, it is, right english pub or whatever they That's call where it i like to hang out okay i'll see you there and uh thank you all for joining us on random talk and join us again next week and uh contact us on the website if there's a subject you'd like to hear just go to the wtan and uh email us about some subjects if you want to come on if you want to advertise we're open to have taken your money we're, we'll take up to a million dollars from you if you want uh, if you got some coins that you want to sell or you want to bring in and put towards advertising that's great with us so we're the lean mean talking machine thanks again folks and we'll see you next week see you next week